Bargello is a fun counted thread embroidery technique that is made up of straight stitches that move across a piece going up and down in different patterns. Now there are a lot of different patterns that you can use, but today I'm gonna to show you one of the most simple patterns. And this is just a simple zigzag pattern. It's easy to do, but it still looks great. So in the sample I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be stitching on plastic canvas. So plastic canvas is a great option. It's economical, it's easy to use, it's easy to find. And I'm just gonna be making this little sample piece. So if you wanna make a little sample piece like this, you could even put felt on the back and use it as a coaster. You could make a bunch of sample pieces and stitch them together to make a little box or container. There's a lot of things you can do with this, but it's just a really good practice piece. And on the plastic canvas, I'm gonna be stitching this with just worsted weight yarn. So I have a bunch of yarn here that's left over from other projects. So I have four colors. You can use four colors, you can use three colors, you can be creative with whatever you have and whatever you want to use. Um, just make sure that the yarn is thick enough and when you start stitching, then you'll be able to see. If the yarn is too thick, unfortunately you wouldn't be able to use this. So you can't use a super chunky yarn because it won't fit. But if the yarn is not thick enough, then you can just use two strands. So there's a lot of uh, variation for what you can do with yarn. And then you will need a needle and you will want a yarn needle or a tapestry needle. So you're looking for a yarn that has a dull tip it doesn't have to be sharp for this, but it has to have a big eye. The eye of the needle has to be big enough to accommodate the yarn that you're using. Uh, so on my plastic canvas, I have a square that is cut and it's 27 of those little squares across and 27 down. Um, I like to use an odd number because with an odd number, there is a center square. And that center square is how we can align all our pieces by starting in the center and working out from there. But of course, in your sample, you can feel free to make this any size that you want to make your sample. So once you have everything ready, let's get started. So when you've chosen your colors, you need to decide what order the lines are going to go in. So I think I'm going to use this order, green, blue, red, white, and then it will be repeating. So I'm going to start with the green. Now put those aside and you're going to take a strand and it's going to be probably longer than you would normally use for hand stitching. And you'll see why it's longer in a minute. So we'll thread the needle and then we're gonna find this center piece on here. So I know it's 27 across, so 14 should be the middle, and we'll just double check. So this is the middle uh, column. So I know this is the very center square wear on the chart. So I'm going to take a stitch and it's going to go right over top of that center square. And when I pull the yarn through, I'm only going to use about half the yarn. I'm going to leave this big piece sticking out and you'll see why I do that in a minute. But now from here, um, I'm going to make another stitch right beside it over also over one hole, but I'm going to be going up one. So you can see I'm going up a step. And then I'll go over another, up another step. Now, as I'm starting to use this yarn, I can see that in between the stitches, I can see the um, plastic canvas. So this is making me think that maybe I wanna use two strands of thread. 
So I'm just gonna do a little test here to see if two strands of this yarn would be better. So I will catch the end in there and then do a little test. Yeah, and you can, I like this a lot better, the two strands, because then you can't see the plastic canvas. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this all out of here, which is not difficult to do, and then I'm gonna get another piece of uh, yarn and start this again with two pieces. So anytime, if it's not looking exactly the way you thought, it's easy to take it out of plastic canvas. You're just stitching in reverse and then you can adjust. So it's your project. You can adjust the look for whatever you want to be. Now I'm actually going to need a bigger needle because the eye of this needle isn't big enough to accommodate two pieces of yarn. So I'm going to get a bigger needle so that I can thread both of these pieces of yarn. So now I have a bigger needle and of my two pieces of yarn, and I'm gonna come back into the same spot and still leaving the long tail. And now I'm gonna stitch and each, each stitch is gonna be the same um, height, but I'm gonna be going up one step with each stitch. And I'm gonna go up five steps. And then I'm going to start to come down five steps. And you can adjust how your stitches look based on the tension. So you can see this one, if I leave it really loose, it'll look like that. If I pull it tighter, it'll look a little different. So once I've come down five steps, I'm gonna go back up. And then down. And then once I've gotten to the end, I will just weave the end of my thread underneath the stitches And then I can trim off the ends. So now I'm gonna go back and thread this yarn onto my needle. And now I'm going to turn this around and work this side of it. And the only reason I did this was so that it could be easily centered and I didn't need to start and stop my thread in the middle. Now when I get to the end of this side, I'll just double check before I cut off my thread, but I can see it's a zigzag, five up and five down. It's even all the way across. And now I can just finish off the end of this thread. There it is. So the next pass across I'm going to do, I'm going to use this blue yarn, if I can find the end of it. And this blue yarn, it looks similar in weight to the green yarn. So I'm just going to go ahead and use uh, two strands of this. I'm not even going to try this one with a single piece. And with the blue, um, I won't have to start in the middle and go out. I can just start at one end and go across to the other end because I have the green 
line as reference to follow. So I'm going to start here and I'm pulling it through and then I'm just going to leave a tail and kind of hold on to that and then after I've done some stitches I'll come back and finish off that end. Um, if it's helpful you can use a waist knot instead of holding it in your hand. So you can check out the other video I have for how to do a waist knot. So I'm just stitching across with echoing, I'm just stitching across echoing the green stitches. So all my stitches are the same size and I'm just going up and down in five steps. So once you've got all the way across, then we'll just finish off the thread in the same way. And don't forget to come back and finish off this end of the thread. And that's all there is to it. So you would just repeat the same process, but with red, white, red, white, and then repeat the same process echoing below the green. So you can use as many different colors as you want. You could use as two colors, you could use 20 colors, however you want to do it. You would just keep echoing. And as you can see, when you get to the top, when it's not going to get a full row, you would just stitch partial rows. So it would look like it's going off the edge. So that's how simple it is to stitch a plain zigzag Bargello design. Now this pattern can be used in lots of other applications. You can stitch bigger projects like pillows, bags, whatever you want to do. You can stitch this Bargello design in other ways. You can stitch it on canvas with wool, on Ada cloth with embroidery floss. There's lots of different ways you can use this. So have fun using this pattern in your own embroidery projects. For more embroidery tutorials and inspiration, be sure to check out ebitastudio.com. Thank you.